Hello and welcome to a very special, well, not how I paint things today. What I thought would be fun to round off March would be a little bit of sort of hobby time. And I've seen a few videos on YouTube recently going up about kit bashing and ways that you can convert your miniatures so that they look different to what's out of the box. And there's a little bit of an argument between what counts as a conversion and what counts as a kit bash, because at its core, Kit bash simply means taking two parts from different kits that weren't really meant to you know, be applied to one another and making something different out of them. Whereas most folks will tell you that a conversion means you have to uh, cut or alter or in some way you know, start slicing pieces up. And it's a little bit of shorthand where I think kit bash, conversion, are they the same thing? Yes and no. But <laughs> today what we're going to do is really more on the kit bashing spectrum. So here in front of me, I've got three different guardsmen and they have been made three different ways. On the left here, you might have seen this Praetorian before. And he is quite simply a head swap, uh, that head there from Anvil Industry. And I've got a pack on him from a Napoleonics kit that I had laying around. The rest of him is purely Citadel parts. So Games Workshop kits, which I've then painted up to look like a Praetorian. And he looks pretty cool. On the other side here, I've got again Citadel body, but the head and legs are from Anvil Industry. So there's a little bit more sort of variation there. The legs in particular, I think, really makes them look that bit different, you know, the great coat style. And then in the center here is a kit from Reptilian Overlords with a Warlord Games head jammed in there. And he by far is the most different, of course. Now, personally, my favorite has to be this fella on the end here. And there is a reason for this. You'll notice that most of the conversions that I do will tend to have the uh, Citadel body and weapons. And the reason for this is because when you've got something on the tabletop where you and your opponent need to know what that fella's carrying, if you've got access to the plastic kits and you have those weapons, a LAS gun, a plasma gun, a grenade launcher, we know what those look like. So I figure if you've got the parts, may as well use them. It's also probably one of the cheaper ways <laughs> to, uh, to convert them, because if you happen to have a box of guardsmen, then it's not too much just to pick up a few extra heads if you fancy and make a little bit of a difference that way. Now I've also got here a couple of examples that I haven't finished painting yet, but I've quickly primed them and given them a shade so that you can see them properly on the screen. Now this here, I'm using the Citadel weapons and legs, you might recognize those, but the torso itself, if I spin them around slowly, this is actually a 3D print from Reptilian Overlords. Now, I believe they're still doing some resin shipping. So, you know, if you don't have a 3D printer, most of these places, you'll still be able to pick up the parts if you want them. Uh, but it's a very good case <laughs> for getting a 3D printer if you have the space for one. Uh, if you want a Talon sort of Desert Raider look, nice and simple there. But then what about this fella? Now here's Torso from Citadel. You know, we'll recognize those arms and gun by now, but his legs and his helmet are both from Reptilian Overlords as well. And I really, I love these stupid overwrought helmets. Eh? There's nothing that says Imperial to me like lost through history. But now let's have a go. I'm actually gonna put something together here on screen. Uh, let you see the creative process as it were. Um, as well as mention a few other places that you can pick up parts if you want to convert your 40k miniatures. So let's start off. I've got here a set of great coat legs from Anvil Industry. Now these ones are 3D printed, but you can also find these in their online store in resin. So again, if you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry about it. Now Anvil stuff is designed to fit with their miniatures. So there's this little peg on the top of the legs section, which fits into their torsos. You'll find that with a lot of sort of third party stuff, you know, quite fairly, it's designed to fit with their own kits, but it doesn't take much to adjust that. So I've got here a pair of clippers. Hey, wanton brutality, <laughs> get rid of that. And then sometimes you're gonna have a little bit of a rough top left on there. All it takes, a couple of seconds with your old uh, file there, and uh, I'll smooth that off, ready for the torso. Now in true, here's one we prepared earlier fashion. I've got here a torso that I've glued a couple of arms onto. 
Uh, now it's important to note, I've got super glue on top of the legs here because resin and plastic, they're not gonna join properly if you use plastic glue. In fact, they won't join at all. So let's just carefully push that on there. And then while I've got a couple of seconds, double check that he is lined up correctly. Now, as well as the torso, I've also trimmed some of the equipment from the sprue there too. Um, I have cut off the bayonet sheath because they tend to interact a little strangely with some of these third-party legs. It's not a big deal though. Uh, what we're going to do now is pick a head, and I've got a couple of selections here. So I've got here a couple of these style helms from Anvil Industry. I've also got a couple of the Brody helmet sets from Anvil as well. But as I was looking through my bits box, I found I still have a bunch of metal heads from Gripping Beast. And these are pretty cool. A little hard to get a decent shot of <laughs> once I've taken them off the sprue. Uh, but these little French World War I era heads, uh, they're pretty awesome. Here's one of the Cappy heads. And you can order these in sprues. Uh, you get them in sprues of five. And there's five unique faces. So I reckon I'm going to use the Adrian helmet for this dude. Now, as you might expect, like I mentioned about these parts not always being meant for you know, Citadel products, the uh, necks on these guys have quite a pronounced little nubbin there that you're going to have to file down. Now, my recommendation is grab hold of a, an actual Imperial Guardsman head so you can see what the uh, neck joint looks like. But all it's going to take is grab yourself a couple of minutes with a file and you'll be able to buff that down and it will look something like this when you're finished, which will fit into the socket of the Imperial Guardsman. So a little bit of super glue in his neck joint and let's... Fingers crossed here, if I can get this straight with the camera there. Now once that glue is dried, this is what you'll have. And that's pretty simple to achieve. Uh, really, it's just a case of finding heads, I think is the most important part, as you will have seen if you've looked at that Praetorian previously. What I'm going to do now is because I want to go for historically inspired, but not slavishly adhering to, I'm actually going to paint this fella up using the techniques that I demonstrated in my Le Grognard video. So this guy's going to have sort of a blue-black finish, but I'm going to do that off screen because I have already shown you, you know, how I would do that. Let's get a look at what it looks like when he's finished and how he fits in with actual guardsmen. Now once he's painted, all of those individual pieces will be largely indistinguishable from if they were, let's say, official Citadel stuff. And I'm pretty pleased with that result, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> he's a cool looking dude. Although you'll see why I ordinarily try to avoid painting eyes. I'm still not very good at it. Anyway, let's get them lined up with all the rest of his mates and have a look at what they look like en masse. And there you have it. Just a handful of ways that you can use third-party pieces to really go above and beyond in converting your guardsmen. Now the elephant in the room is whether or not you'd be able to use these in a games workshop. And the short answer is, well, probably not. Because a fairly decent chunk of them aren't Citadel parts, and that's not unreasonable, it's their stores, but when was the last time any of us actually played a game in a games workshop? <laughs> and if you happen to live outside of the UK where there isn't a Citadel, sorry, a games workshop or a Warhammer store uh, in every tiny village that's out there, I'm looking at you Sutton Coldfield, nobody, nobody correct me on that, <laughs> uh, most gaming takes place either at clubs or at home. So if you've been using the last, you know, few months to start putting together some scenery or something at home, you know, even if you've only got a, a kitchen table that you can play Kill Team on, well, why not convert a Kill Team that's just for you, something that looks as cool as you want. Now I'm going to link in the description a bunch of different places where you can get your hands on even more, um, you know, alternative parts. Uh, the reason why I've used largely Anvil and... Uh, Reptilian Overlord stuff in this video is because I've got it, <laughs> but there are others out there, and I strongly recommend a bit of Google Foo, and you will find something really cool out there, which will suit the image you have in mind for your guard. So even though this was a little bit different, hopefully there was something interesting there to you, and maybe something that can start jogging some ideas for you at home. As always, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. And as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all the patrons who are keeping me ticking over in paint and glue. 
including my wonderful producers, Ellen Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Connor, Trainboy, and Fred. So, thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.